So let's go back to our UI. By the way, you can hide this thing by either dragging it down or pressing this button up here. Okay, just like you hide this thing with that, you hide with this with that. All right, so we'll stop. Now I want to make a whole keypad worth of buttons here. Instead of just having a five, I want a whole bunch. So I'm going to do that with copy and paste. Copy, paste. Okay, make another one. Uh, paste another one here. Okay, maybe this is our four, five, and six. Uh, I can actually select all three and copy, paste. Okay, one, two, and three. And maybe paste again. Go up here, seven, eight, nine, and we'll copy and paste one more to make our zero. Okay, so here's our nice little keypad right here. And uh, now we can run, and we'll notice that all of these buttons are sending touch digit, you see? Okay, so they're all sending touch digit, which is good. That's kind of nice. We can also tell they're all sending it with this little circle. Watch what happens when I mouse over. You see? It's selecting them all to say they're all sending this. Okay? But we really want to know which one is sending it. Okay? So we're going to have to look at this sender argument to see which button is sending us this touch digit. Okay? So I'm going to create a local variable here. This is how you create a local variable, var. The name, which I'm going to call digit. And I'm going to set it equal to whatever I get from asking the sender what its title is. Okay? Now, how do I do that? Well, we know that we send a message to something by doing the object, right, sender, and a dot. Okay? Unfortunately, button has mm, quite a few methods. Okay? I mean, probably hundreds. Okay? Because it's inheriting things from control and view and stuff like that. So this is pretty much uh, a bummer trying to find out how to know what to get. The t so we need documentation here. We need some help. Okay? So the way to do that is you're going to hold down the option key. Okay? I already showed you control is an important key for dragging between your view and your thing. Now option is an important key. And when you hold down option, look what happens when you mouse over things. They get this dash blue underline going. And what that means is if you click on them, Xcode's going to tell you as much as it can about that thing. So let's click on UI button. And when we do, we get this little window that has a complete description of UI button in here. And really importantly, down at the bottom, it has a reference link. See this reference link? And if I click this, it's going to take me to the documentation for UI button. So there we go. Here it is, UI button. Here's all the methods and properties in UI button. Here's all the description of it. And there is all kinds of text here that describes all the methods and how they work. Okay? Now, I need to find something about the title. So um, I could search here by just doing Command F to search, and I could search for title. But unfortunately, the title is mentioned a lot. See? So that's no good. So I can go over here to the summary of all the methods and properties. Um, we could look here, getting dimensions. No, I don't want to do that. Get, configuring edge insets. We don't even know what that is yet. Uh, getting the current state. That sounds pretty good. Getting current state. Let's see if we got button type. Okay, here's how I can get the button's type. That's good. Current title. The current title displayed on the button. Victory. That's what we want. Okay, now when we find something in the documentation we want, you're going to see that there's a Swift explanation of it and an Objective C explanation. So we're always going to be looking at the Swift version in this class. So what is this thing? Okay, this is not a method because it would say func right here. If this were a method on UI button, it would have func. Instead, it has var. That means it's a property. So a property is like an instance variable. Okay? Now, this is an interesting property because it's got this little terminology in the end, which means it's read only. So we can't set the button's title here with current title. Turns out that that's because there's another method up here called set title for state for setting the button's title. Because when you set the button's title, you want to set the title for what state it's in, highlighted, disabled, whatever. But luckily, there's a current title here that just gets you the current title um, uh, in whatever state the button's currently in. So here is, so that's why it says var instead of func. Here's the name of the property, current title. Here is the type. I promised you that it was always colon and type. Now, the type of this is string? <laughs> what? Maybe. OK, we're going to suspend our disbelief here because that question mark actually means something. We're going to kind of hope that this is a string. 
but it's not going to be, but that's okay. okay? We're going to try and assume it is, all right? So anyway, this is how we look things up in the documentation to see uh, the way it works. Now, there's another way to do it, okay, which is even cooler. I type this dot. I want the title, so I'm just going to start typing title. Okay, I don't know there's a method called title. In fact, there isn't. But as soon as I start typing title, it shows me all the methods to start with title, all the methods that include title in the name, see? And all the methods that have T-I-T-L-E in the order, okay? And it gives it to you in the order you might expect, right? Title first. So this is kind of helping. You can search, basically. And when you do this, you would quickly see, ooh, current title. That looks like what I want. And you can double click here, actually, and it'll put it in there. OK? So there's our current title. Now, instead of printing touch digit, we basically want to print which one, which digit was touched here. So I'm going to say touched, uh, we could say percent %s digit comma digit. This is what it would look like in C, for example. Are, is everyone familiar with this printf-like format? OK, good, because you can't do it in Swift. OK, <laughs> we don't do that in Swift. Instead, we do backslash, open parentheses, close parentheses, and then we can put anything we want in here, OK, including digit. And we don't need this out here on the slide. OK, so this will be evaluated, converted to a string. Some things can't be converted to strings, but most, most things can. Um, so you put that in there. Okay, if it can't, you'll get a warning. Okay. All right, so that's how we do that. So let's go ahead and see what's going on. But now, maybe we should start paying attention to our warnings. Okay, when you submit your homework, no warnings, please. Okay, no warnings. And certainly no errors. Those are red things. Those won't build. No warnings. So what is this warning? Let's take a look at this warning. You look at a warning by clicking on it. So I'm going to click on it. And it says here, variable digit was never mutated. Consider changing to let constant. Okay, what does that mean? Well, that means that instead of var here, it wants us to put let. Okay, and in fact, you should always do that. Anytime you declare a local variable, okay, or even a property that is initialized at the beginning and never changes, in other words, it's a constant, use let instead of var. Now, why do you want to do that? Two reasons, really. One, it helps people reading your code realize, oh, this thing's never going to change. I don't have to worry about it. It's just like a constant. And two, if that thing were, for example, an array or a dictionary, and you used let, that means nothing could be put into that dictionary or taken out, or into the array or taken out. Okay? So it's how you can create read-only arrays and dictionaries. Okay? So always use let when you are doing a constant. And in fact, notice that XKit is saying, hey, if you click here, I'll fix it for you. Okay? So it says fix it, replace var with let. Sure. Okay, and it did it. Now our warning's gone. Okay, so let's run. See if this is working. We're crossing our fingers about that whole string question mark thing. All right, so here we go. Let's press five. Oh, what the heck is going on down there? Okay, touched optional five digit. Okay, so what is this optional business? Okay, so here you all want to take a deep breath, clear your minds, and pay close attention. Okay, because this is a very important thing in Swift. It's ubiquitous throughout the entire iOS API. Okay, very cool feature, but it requires a little bit of getting used to in terms of its syntax. Okay, this is the feature of optionals. Okay, in Swift, there is a type called optional. It's a type like int or bool or anything else. String, it's dictionary, array, optional. Optional is just a type. Uh, this type can only have two values. One value is not set. Okay? That's expressed in Swift with the keyword nil, N-I-L. Nil only means this optional is not set. That's all it means in Swift. It doesn't mean it's zero. It doesn't mean a pointer that doesn't point anywhere like in other languages. Nil means an optional that's not set. The other state that an optional can be in is set. Okay? Now, if it's in the set state, it can have an associated value, okay? an associated value, which can be of any other type. Okay? It actually could also be an optional. You can have an optional optional. But that associated value is just associated with the set state. Okay? In the not set state, there is no associated value because it's not set. Okay? Now, what does it look like to declare an optional? Well, let's go back with our option key and take a look at current title. Okay, remember this from the documentation? It said var current title, string question mark. That means this is 
an optional whose associated value is a string. Okay? So if someone looks at this property and says, what type is that property? And they say, oh, it's a string, but it's optional. No, no. This is an optional, and its associated value is a string. Okay? Get used to saying this type is optional. Okay? So this is an optional string. That's what we would say. It's an optional string. Okay? But primarily, it's an optional. Okay? Its associated value is a string. So this current title, why is it an optional? Well, because we might have a button here that has no title set, not set. Okay? So the title needs to be an optional so we can represent the case where it's not set. Now, anything can be an optional. I'm not just pointers or objects. Ints could be optional. You have an optional int. Okay? Um, but here we are representing a, the title, the button, which is a string, okay? and it might be not set. Okay, so we need that to be an optional. So how do I get the string? Because I don't want this digit, which currently is also an optional string. Isn't it kind of weird here when I said let digit equal, nobody said, how come you didn't say colon string? Okay, I didn't say the type. I declared a local variable. It didn't even have a type. How was that possible? In Swift, Swift will infer the type all the time. Okay? If it's possible for it to know the type, it will infer it. And in fact, it's wrong, really bad coding style, to put that type in there. It's better to just say, let digit equal, and let Swift infer it. And here, Swift has inferred the digit must be of type string question mark. That's because this is of type string question mark. So of course, the digit has to be that. You see what's happening there? So you're going to see type inference all the time in Swift. It makes your code much more compact, a lot less repeated stuff. Is that a question in the back? Yeah, is, it, is that the same for var too? It's a question, is that the same for var too? Absolutely, it's the same for var. Okay. So how do I get that string, though? If this button title is set, how do I get that associated value thing okay, out of this optional? And the answer is you put an exclamation point in the end. Okay. Now, optional is question mark on the end of a declaration. Exclamation point is unwrap this thing and give me the uh, associated value. Okay, so this is very succinct. Okay, one character for each side of the, using this. Okay, question. Can you, can you briefly talk about why you want the title to why you design title to be optional instead of like an empty string or something that's not? Okay, so the question is why does Swift have this optional thing instead of just doing empty string to mean a button without a title or maybe for an int minus one, I don't know, or for a pointer, zero memory address or something like that. Um, the main reason for that is, for example, pointers to objects in Swift, you don't see the memory address. So you couldn't have it be zero. Okay? That's hidden from you. So there'd be no way to do it. For an int, if you wanted an optional int, is it minus one or zero? Max int? What is it? I don't know what it is. So Swift is trying to be consistent across all things, ints, pointers to objects, whatever, to make sure that we can tell which ones are not set. Okay, So that's the, the thought behind it. It's really great, actually. Once you get used to it, it's fantastic. All right, so we unwrap it with this exclamation point. Now, what would happen if that current title um, value was not set, and this exclamation point tried to pull out the associated value? What do you think would happen? Error. Error? Yeah, bad error. It would crash my app. Okay. So exclamation point crashes your app if you try to unwrap an optional that's in the not set state, okay, if it's nil. Now, some of you conservative folks might be saying, I'm never using an exclamation point. That's so easy to crash my app, okay? And the answer to that is yes, it is. But sometimes crashing your app is a good thing. It helps you find a bug, okay, because something that you expect to be set by a certain point isn't, and it crashes your app, and you find it before it goes out to your customer, and some unexpected thing is happening because something's not set. Now, I'm going to show you a little later how you can unwrap the optional and get the associated value without crashing. Basically, test to see if it's set and do it. Okay, so I'll show you that in a little bit. All right, so we've unwrapped this uh, optional. We're going to crash if it's not set. That's fine. And so now, notice when I do the option click on digit, what's the type? String. Not string, op not optional string. String. That's good because we unwrapped it. So now when we run, instead of saying touched optional six digit down there, it's going to say touch the six digit. Touch two, touch four, eight, nine. Okay? Got it? 